This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get techie. It's Mike Sorg, and it's the awesome cast episode. I don't know, that's the Christmas edition. It doesn't matter. It's the end of the year. It's the final one of 2016, or as Doug wants me to call it, awesome cast episode Q. Uh, <laughs> we're here in the uh, Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to uh, talk about our gadgets and the best of the year and our predictions for the next. With me first on the line from uh, Studio C. It's a different studio seat this 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 week, <laughs> but but Cynthia Klosky of Shift Collaborative joins us. How you doing? I'm groovy as always. Thank I'm delighted to be here. Awesome. I got to visit the uh the 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 the, the offices. You were hiding from me apparently. <laughs> I didn't even know you were there. I, I um you were hiding from me, I think. It was stealth. <laughs> it was a stealth visit. <laughs> apparently apparently also with us in studio is doug durda should i drink that.com and yin's love barbecue what's up hey hi there welcome to your yearly uh visit because <laughs> i think you were here last year i was too, right i was and my prediction was terrible oh i can't wait to terrible. get into those so <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of people not here so they can't defend their predictions from last year <laughs> <laughs> um but uh that's why they're not here that's why they're not here everybody got embarrassed off of the christmas show with their <laughs> predictions uh but we do have those uh so we'll be although i don't know why there's not one for me and i didn't get to listen to last year's show uh, i i think i just kind of made a half ass one or something i guess so i guess i get i get lucked out of that part so no i remember having trouble coming up with one yeah, so no, you just you just you're just like this isn't worth writing down whenever i said it <laughs> okay i guess i didn't have one last year i just <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just you know worked around it, but uh, but no, it's Christmas edition. We're going to talk about our awesome things of the year, a little bit of year re- in review stuff, and again, kind of looking forward to 2017 and what we kind of expect from things. So uh, you can check everything out at awesomecast.net. You can join us live on awesomecast.net every week, round about 7 p.m. At the very least, you'll be linked to uh, wherever we're streaming the show lately. That is over on Facebook Live, so you can also follow us on Facebook, awesomecast over there. Get the uh, uh, notification whenever we do go live with this show or special interviews that we do from time to time. And you can join us along the way for those as well. You can also support the show, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Things are going to be looking a little different here in the coming weeks, so uh, I'll look forward to that. And if you're a current Patreon supporter, so thank you, Matt Weller and uh, Mike Fedor uh, out there. Uh, for supporting the show and uh, and contributing uh, to, to it and help us uh, uh, grow. And we, we have some pretty cool ideas for uh, 2017, and we hope that you Patreon supporters can help us uh, accomplish those here in the coming weeks. But that's for when we come back, after the holidays. Right now, it's time to look back at the best of 2017, our awesome things of 2017 and i do have them since i have them in front of me i think it'd be interesting to review what is the best of 2015 and, are we going to forget about 2016 like it never happened no 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 but i think it's kind of curious to see what were the big things in 2015 <laughs> oh, that were that oh, were in our attention i don't even know well doug so long ago doug yours was um yours was sling tv was it yeah yeah sling tv go sling <laughs> i still have it uh will was on the show and he said cord cutting uh, uh oh that's wow okay cynthia was uh, uh crowdfunding platforms and they've definitely been i guess matured in in, in the new year right mm-hmm. so um of me vr and oculus uh chilla was the apple watch katie insta content you know talking about stuff like uh you know our periscopes that was the year periscope and and and, and snapchat really blew Meerkat. up cat Meerkat, definitely. Is that, is definitely. Meerkat? Meer, mo- Meer, yeah. Meerkat. Meerkat was the first one. Oh, I was on the That's Meerkat right. bandwagon. I remember big time. And that terrible website design that they had too. It was nice to be able to just turn it on and we have like 80 people watching our our clients' video that we were and recording. It feels like so long ago, it but does. It, it really wasn't. It does. It was a year and a half ago. More, a year and three quarters ago. So so who wants to go first? What's your awesome thing of 2016? 
Anybody? Hmm. Anybody? I can say um, the thing that is really there's there are two things that changed my life and and as much as I'm I think of myself as a tech fan I do tend to be behind like I'm not on the cutting edge I'm not on the bleeding edge I'm not on the cutting edge I'm like right behind the cutting edge you know like I'm watching the cutting edge cut and then I jump in so so for me the um, the things that have really changed the way I live are um, smart watches. So my, my watch really actually literally changes the way I live. Like when I wake in the morning, when I go to bed at night, like it's actual change in my reality. Um, how often I get up and walk around, how often I drink water, like all of these, even breathing, right? Like I have an app that tells me to breathe. That's how much it has changed everything about me. So that, you know, I think we've talked about wearables as um, important to the world, but there's still, it's a very small percentage of, of humans who are really actually wearing the wearables. So it's changing a certain segment of, of, of the information. And, for, and I just happen to be one of those people. So for me, that's been fundamental. But for the world, I think it's got a long way to go. So w- which one are you, which one uh, do you have? Which smartwatch? I have an iWatch. Okay. Um, and I think I have, I think I have version two. There's like not, there's not like a, maybe I have version one. Let's help. Again, remember, not the cutting edge. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck I have. Excuse my language. <laughs> um, yeah, that's right. I, I uh, upgraded. I, I've been on the Pebble line for a while. I know RIP Pebble, right? Who would have thought? Yeah. After I, that. I didn't see that one coming. I was one of the few people to get my Pebble 2, which I ended up um, putting a crack in. So I guess I'm not getting that serviced <laughs> now. Uh, I, I, although I, I got a crack in, in the coolest way because I, I wore it when I was uh, snorkeling in Thailand. Uh, and and I bashed it getting getting back on the boat I think, um, but uh, but no again it, it it's got the the sleep function it's got the stepometer so I'm getting that notifications and it's kind of yeah again I'm responding to it right so uh, you know more than just the notifications we were getting before so Doug are you can't you can't you take that to you break it we fix it like in the South Hills Village I consider it <laughs> but now I'm like. Like now, now that I know that support is going to eventually die on this thing, I have to look for the next one, <laughs> you know. Which sucks because I bought this one right and, right and spent a little more on it because it was the updated version and everything. And now I'm sitting on I have three Pebble watches that are maybe not even going to work after like the next uh, iOS. Maybe. How often do we hear the story though? You buy the technology and you shut them down. Yeah. Yeah, it, which, it happens a lot. Which is straight up like I. It's frustrating too. <laughs> I kind of wish. I kind of wish I got the Kickstarter refund. You know, I mean, this was a great experience, but I kind of wish I had that money back to go. I probably get an Apple Watch. To be quite honest, I'm not getting a Fitbit, right? So. But you're you're definitely that bleeding edge kind of a guy, Mike. Because you, I mean, I'm thinking about you with the Google Glass. I mean, you're. You like to you you like to live on that edge. I've been making some great choices lately, haven't I? I was like, man, if they were open, I was going to get some uh, Snapchat spectacles too because we came across the store in Fifth Avenue a couple weeks ago. Uh, but uh, it was it was late uh, late on a Sunday night. So did Katie K come calling about your pebble too? <laughs> no, no, they didn't. <laughs> nope, nope, oh. nope, not yet. I should probably poke David somebody Highfield. about that, right, David Highfield? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, call the Sorg. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm, I'm trying not to. That, that was a once in a, you know, that was a good opportunity. But that was cool, time. though. That was yeah. really cool to see. We're like, yeah. like, I know that guy, man. Tech guy. Yeah, we're finally getting our, we're finally getting respect. We're on the news. and That's right. That's right. Then Google shuts it down. Chill is still getting used out of that thing. Really? Yeah, he, had still, it for like a year. he still takes pictures with it. I think that was, wasn't that two Christmases ago? We I remember the, when you guys made the trade. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's, someone's that, going to make out sweet on this deal. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think I did because this is still the, the iPad that, that I traded for. And it was the, um, now I'm in possession of two Kickstarter pebbles. Wow. So that is vintage action right there. So there you go. Not mint condition. Can I do a Kickstarter movie about you being a Kickstarter supporter? <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't actually, well, Chilla <laughs> bought the first one. That because I was his Kickstarter Pebble and and the iPad and a hundred bucks for the Google Glass, paying it forward through Kickstarter. That's right, my Kickstarter movie. Chilla Chilla has supported a lot of the awesome cast with his hand me downs around <laughs> here, to be honest. But uh, I I, have I know a, Missy loves it whenever I say, "Hey, Mike, I've got a bunch of cables and monitors I need to get rid of." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Missy. Yep. <laughs> My family's right. very happy about it. <laughs> now that we, but I was like, Missy's uh, uh, starting to to, pr- to be a uh, producer on these shows, and now she's in a position that I can get the dirty looks when we say things on the show 
like <laughs> like like Doug over there. With That's your... why I'm glad she's behind the screen. Yeah, can't yep. see her. Oh, I know we're number one. Okay, uh, but yeah, no, I I think definitely, it, it, you know, wearables may be in this. Like the discussion is like, well, wearables aren't taking off, but I think it's a use case thing. And we talked about a few weeks ago here on the show, like a, a pair of glasses you can get, prescription glasses that. Like you don't have a display, but it would it would do a stepometer and everything and, and give you notifications and, and things mm-hmm. like it was like kind of if you wanted if you didn't want to watch, you could get that in, in your glasses if you wore glasses like pretty much all the time. Right. Like like they're finding out different ways to do that. And I, I think that's pretty cool. I think I think it's going to be different from, you know, case to case. Maybe some people don't want to watch. Maybe I want something around my ankle. Maybe I want to wear something in my pocket. You know, um, one of our friends had like a clip that was their Fitbit, right? Uh, you know, it could be glasses. It could be a hat. I don't know. Like, I, I think I think these different form factors are going to make a difference. And we're going to see different uses and different functionalities for those kind of forms. Well, I think the glasses, too, are really going to help with the, I guess, as uh, virtual reality evolves, too. I mean, it's no longer going to be these big bulky things that we're wearing on our faces too mm-hmm. the, all the wearables are going to look more like you know like a regular pair of glasses and you can't tell it but someone's actually thinking that they're you know that they're seeing things in front of you know, i see a pokemon in front of me right now but yeah i was just wearing a regular pair of glasses mm-hmm. uh, speaking of wearables I, I there's an awesome thing in uh from wheels in the chat room he says his awesome things of uh 2016 is his smart watch the galaxy gear s which i don't think they're making another one of those like i don't think they're scheduled think to so. I think they're ones that, that, that decided they were going to pull back on those. Um, Facebook Live, that's a that's, that's pretty, one of my big ones for this. One of your big ones, um, and I know he's they've been using it with the wrestling promotion and and, and kind of doing that kind of thing. Uh, we're on, but we Facebook Live is at the point we're broadcasting this show on there. So I mean, it's it's we've moved on from YouTube, right? Um, and uh, his Galaxy Seven S Seven Edge, which is again a thing I see everywhere. Yeah, you over there. <laughs> Yeah, but in a case, it doesn't look as sexy without with the case on and everything. You got the same iPhone problem. Ooh. But the nice thing is I've got that rapid charge, too. So I could go from mm-hmm. dead battery to fully charged in less than two hours. This is the year that I've like salivated over an I- uh, Android phone, maybe for the first time. Yeah. So I could see in that thing everywhere, it seems. And I swore I would never buy a Samsung phone because we had so many problems with the, I think it was the Galaxy 3. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And we went through five of them within a year because they were just terrible. They would they would reboot, they'd brick on us, and we would just have the basic software on there. So I, I swear I would never get one again. And then my I went through the whole Motorola phase. My droids just totally tanked on me, which kind of ticked me off. And I, I went back and I absolutely love this phone. I've never really like geeked out about a phone, yeah. but I love what I can do with this thing. Yeah. Uh, Doug, what is yes. your awesome thing of the year? Uh, actually. Facebook Live plays into it. I mm-hmm. love that instant content or instant content is so readily available to the masses now. Like anyone could broadcast. And it's something that we had geeked out about, you know, over the last few years, but we had to go through services like Justin TV or or one of these other third parties. Now we're on Facebook or Twitter. You hit one button and you're broadcasting to everyone. And people will watch like someone washing dishes just because you can do it now. And I, and I think the novelty is going to start to wear off. But for content creators like ourselves, it's really going to help out mm-hmm. getting behind the scene access to events, to inside, you know, what we're doing. You know, if I'm at a store, I've done this before, where uh, I'm going to go out beer shopping. I say, "Hey guys, I'm going to pick up the beers for the next show. What do you want to? What do you want me to drink?" And I'll go through like the beer aisles, or I'll be, I'll just go out shopping and just start talking and get people to respond. This, this is the thing that. You talk about bleeding edge. Justine and Justin TV was the bleeding edge of this. When yeah, how many years ago? Yeah, how many years ago was that? Had the strapped camera. with the stuff with their backpacks filled with yeah. Was, they had the the battery packs. They had the laptop. They had everything. She running. had. She had. Uh, I remember she explained this one time. Like she had. I, I think when we did the podcast three promos with her, uh, like it was basically a a kind of a big handbag purse with like uh, one of the Sony Vios that was really small and thin at the oh, time. Oh wow! Okay, and that was attached through to the camera and everything, and had whatever cell chip. In I remember it her walking to. around PodCamp with that stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Girl, you're gonna hurt your back." And now, like <laughs> any of us can do it, right? Any of us can pull that up and and yeah. say, "Hey guys, what should I get here?" You know, um, on Facebook, where everybody already has their their 
ecosystem, basically, mm-hmm. right? We don't have to go to a meerkat and say, hey, everybody, go over this app. It's like, no, hey, go to your timeline. Let's do this. And, and Facebook is showing, too, on on the one of their pages. I don't know if it's called the live page or whatever, but you can look at a map of who's broadcasting now and just go look at it. Mm-hmm. And you get not- I love that I get notifications in the app, too, that says, I, I got one tonight that said that you were broadcasting. And now it flashes up on my in my app. And also with Instagram too, the fact that we can now take short videos, kind of like doing it with Snapchat, take short videos and just post them live, like rapid fire. Here's what's going on right now. And you have that 24 hour cycle to watch that video. But also as the content creator, we can also download those, save them for later, and then make a really nice video to put up on Facebook or YouTube. So we can then reuse the content. Mm-hmm. I like, I like the fact that all this stuff is so available. Know, all of this, Yet more, con- I mean, it already feels like we're in, we're living in like a tidal wave of, of content. How, how do you stand out? I mean, you only have milliseconds really before somebody switches over to another channel or, or turns you off or, or just gets bored. You know what I mean? So how, how does it stay important? Well, I, I think for ourselves, we already have a fan base. So it's, we, we know people already know about us discovering us though. Yeah. Good luck. If you're somebody new. Oh, if you're, oh yeah. This is why we're. I mean, this is why I won't let go. <laughs> there, there won't be another I Justine on YouTube no. because there already is one. You know what There's I mean? So many, of but them. there could be an I Justine on one of these new platforms, right? Um, I mean, this is like the thing. Uh, the, the you know, you know, listen to Gary Vaynerchuk. That musically is the one platform, and there's like these first stars pop up on there. That's why it's so important to be first on a platform like that and fi- be one of the first to figure it out. You know, I mean, honestly. <laughs> Go ahead. But don't you feel like um, so? So just today, my one of my business partners was talking about how her cousin, who's twelve, was um, Facebook living, and they're kind of like learning and playing. I, I wonder whether people really want content, content, or just conversation. You know, just interacting with the people that they already know, like think, humans, as opposed to shows or brands. Right. Right. What do you think? Uh, I think it. I, I think it depends. I think it's because um, I. I know I've been. I've been playing with like, hey, watch me edit. <laughs> and I've, I've watched it a few times just and, because I, I want to see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 so, so now I'm giving behind the scenes. Are you interested? Are you already interested in the thing that I do? Maybe that's why you follow me. And uh, here's here's some extra content, right? Um, or or it is the personality, or it is something. I mean, something has to be compelling to that person. I don't think it's just you know the uh, you have to go and just have good content. You need to have just content that's interesting to that audience. Super serving. Your audience may be smaller, but more Right. Super serving. Super serving people. And what's nice, too, is the fact that you can share out that content, too. So if I randomly happen to see you doing something that I think it's cool, mm-hmm. I can then share that with my friends, and then that can help that little viral growth. And maybe people subscribe to you, I mean, depending on where you're broadcasting from, too. Yeah. I, that's that, that was the early days of YouTube, is someone would find out about this, link to it in an email or a web page or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you'd grow that way. Now it's it's instant. It's so much faster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a- absolutely. And and that's why that's why I'm kind of uh, uh, stutter stepping on on like Instagram live because I feel like my audience is over on Facebook and because I'm not seeing a response and I don't think it reaches out to people because I think there's also a, a, a big a big thing happening here where um, and, and, and I don't know if you two uh, have felt this when you do Snapchat. I feel like I'm I'm not broadcasting to my audience as I should be. Right. Because there's no share component. There's no, hey, guys, look what I did over here. Like there's there's this you do it here and that's it. And that's the same feeling I get when I'm doing like like live and maybe a little bit of stories, except I have a little bit more audience over there on Instagram kind of thing. Like I wish there was a button that that Facebook gets notified that that happens, you know. Um, so but it, that's also more for the people that are just engulfed in the whole Snapchat ecosystem. Like that's all they do is snap all day. Yeah. Yeah, they do Snapchat snaps. I, I don't use Snapchat a lot. So I don't know. It's supposed snaps. to be changing now. I think they call it snaps now. I think whatever they whatever those young kids call it these days. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, we should do a, we should do a version of Awesome Cats where we just bring like 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 it's 18, all snaps eighteen to twenty year olds on, you know, <laughs> and and just be like, tell me about Snapchat. You know, teach, teach I, us. You know what? I could probably get Teaspoon to come over and tell us about it. There no, actually, he could tell us about Musically. Oh, really? And I hate music. I'd be really interested he, in that. He is obsessed with it. He told me today, he actually called me when he got home. He said, Dad, just to let you know, I have 100 musicallys. 
He's recorded 100 videos. And now, his, his account is private. Now, now for those that don't know, and I only partially know. I so found out because of me too. Him. <laughs> what is Musical.ly? So you take, and what it does is it plays popular music, and you, you basically, you lip sync to it, and you record video of you singing these songs. And it's just short bursts, like six to ten seconds, I think, for these videos. And you could do some filters with it. You could do some fun stuff. But there, so I'm looking at his account, and he's like, here, look at, look, look at my music lease. So he's listening to all this current like dance music. And I'm like, oh, God, I hate this because I hate dance music. But I played around with it. I found some Pearl Jam, so I was cool with it. Besides that, uh, I'm looking at his videos, though, and he's not really lip syncing. He's just kind of doing like mouthing and, and the cameras are all moving around. How many followers does he have? <laughs> well, he doesn't have that many because it's a private account. Okay. Because I, I won't let him have it. It's just between him and like his cousins mm -hmm. right now. But I, I look at the kids that they, that he follows, though. These are kids that are uh, like 12, 13. These kids have some freaking skills mm -hmm. when it comes to videos. And what I love about Musical.ly, though, you know, I have the side that I hate, but what I love about it is that it's bringing this new creativity to a younger generation that when these kids are like in their 20s, they're going to make some awesome movies. They're going to mm. make some awesome videos. Because they're starting now. Yeah. They're versus, getting that bug in them early. Like, versus I, I didn't get started with video until like junior year when I had a media class. Yeah, that's the same thing for me. Like, I, I mean, I made some things at home, mm -hmm. but I never really had a class until my junior year of high school. And even this is easier than like I have I, I happen to have a Mac and iMovie and start making stuff. Like this is easier. Uh, he's, like, a, he's helped me edit movies before. He's helped you edit movies before? Like, we've sat down, we've edited stuff together. Uh -huh. I said, what, okay, now how would you want to plan this out? Because we've shot videos of the two of us. We've, we did a couple old videos when I was laid off. I need to see these. Exactly oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Those ones. Okay. The one where I deleted my website. Yeah. I thought I deleted it, and he came in and slapped me and all that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those. But it, it's stuff like this. I mean, at the time, he was four and a half, five, I think. Mm -hmm. when we were making those. But with Musical.ly... There, I guess it, it's it's taking them into a new audience where um, people can see it instantly, but also if they don't get that immediate like from someone or a lot of views, mm -hmm. it also makes them really disappointed. Now, he doesn't get that because his account's private, but he has friends, and I've talked to other parents that are like, yeah, my kid's bummed out. I didn't get... That's an interesting question because I was at the gas station, and you know the news is playing, and this bit plays about teenagers and young people that are online are are less fulfilled all overall with their life and i'm like wait a minute you're a teenager you're probably not terribly fulfilled like to begin with but I, like it just does i don't know made me angry <laughs> i have a niece that's in her early 20s and if she if she's met bieber she's met selena gomez because she's like one of these super fans mm -hmm. and she has told me she's like I'm disappointed if I don't get like so many likes on a photo. Like seriously, that's bummed up. out. That's messed up. And but my, there's a certain that is there's that thing that triggers in your brain a little yeah. bit of the. Like, you I'm know, not being accepted. Kind of like, what's wrong with me? What? Yeah, why yeah. This? But also, also you get you get high off of the the uh, that the, the 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 chemical that releases in your brain every time like something good happens. The same reason yeah, why you like, spend money on donuts on on Simpsons Tap, right? What was that, Cindy? I said endorphins. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Getting all sciency in here. I'm, I'm hoping. The, I'm hoping that guy with the DNA startup that I talked to the other day is listening now. <laughs> Going nuts. Endorphins. Endorphins. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, my turn. Uh, so, uh, drive self-driving cars is my awesome thing of the year um, because holy crap, they exist. <laughs> I got a ride in one. This year, uh, doing that Mashable story, and uh, and and they're everywhere, and they've been upgraded. The Volvos are rolling out here in um, in in Pittsburgh. Um, Uber is already fighting with San Francisco over them. Did it run? A, one of them run a red light. <laughs> one of them ran a one of them ran a, uh, ran a red light, but they said that the the person was definitely driving at the time. So. <laughs> So I mean, there's a big like question of like who did the thing, you know, because they, they're supposed to be right there on the on right. the wheel. So, um, so like this is this is for real. Google just just um, announced their company that that that's that it's going under. Lyft is talking about doing stuff. Uh, there's there's 
um, um, things being passed in Michigan about laws about uh, automated driving and, and the insurance stuff. And the biggest question is going to be like, what happens with all the insurance and everything like that? Uh, you know, how are we going to deal with all these these kind of unanswered questions? But still, like like this is for real. Like this isn't a thing that we're like, oh, in like five years, maybe, and if we're lucky. But like this is for real, and yeah, it's got a long way to go. But it's a lot further than I feel like it would have been. Now, if you get picked up by a driverless lift, do you still have to tip it? Well, you're not supposed to tip, tip an Uber. That's why I said lift. Oh, lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question, actually. I, I haven't taken Lyft yet. That's why I wondered. You should take a Lyft. You should definitely try Lyft instead. I know it's a lot we cheaper. Need, we need more Lyft people. Uh, it, 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 it's so weird because I, I like it because I feel like I'm making more money at it. And But everybody else takes... But I also take it because it, pay, it costs less. So why? I don't know. I, I don't know how that, ma- that math works out. So, but anyways. Um... But yeah, um, it, 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 there was, like I said, there was a really good uh, AI thing a, a, a couple weeks ago about that, um, and, and I think the self-driving cars kind of go along with that for for an awesome thing because the AI thing is 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 a part of that. It, um, this this um, um, automated uh, traffic system in, in in Pittsburgh that's supposed to be making the lights um, um, flow a little better. I mean, it, it, it's really cool to see what people are coming up with these days. So you know, I, I read about some. That's very squeaky right now for me. Uh, about some research at MIT that said that traffic would be better if there were fewer stoplights. If you, if there's less automation or in, and so on, if you have to be more hesitant as a driver, mm. then traffic moves better. What do you guys think? That well, makes sense. West Liberty would be so nice to drive. <laughs> McKnight Road, yeah, would be less congested. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a, the dream is going the, the glimmer in his eyes <laughs> all right all right let's get to our predictions first the uh, uh 2016 prediction shaming uh is going down so doug <laughs> my, your prediction was yes my my prediction was that somebody in podcasting would go big time like emerald like they'll get their own. They would get their own show. That didn't happen anywhere. No, really. I and we couldn't include Mark Maron because we no. knew Mark Maron was already huge. I I thought he would. He already had a show on IFC. I thought someone else would hit that level that Mark Maron did. And what about um, what's her name? Daily Grace doesn't. No, I I think the actual show starts next year. So maybe you were just off by a few months. It kind of like uh, Marty McFly and the the whole Cubs win the World Series prediction. He was off by a year. Back to the Future too. Mm-hmm. I'll take that one. Anytime I can get a Back to the Future reference, I'll take it. <laughs> That's I. I think what, was um, Hannah Hart supposed to be in the show with her, or is it just Daily Grace? Oh, I don't know. I'm not keeping up with that. But they're they're like oh, are they it doesn't vloggers. go by the Daily Grace scheme or that the other people have that. Um, I I don't know. They do like they do movies and stuff together. You know, they're all they're all the click. You know, so I don't know. Because Grace did. I mean, she went into TV and movies. Mm-hmm. But that's not. I, I, and now I think that he is really starting out. That's that's the thing. I feel like I feel like wow, they're not growing because you know seeing like the whole YouTube phenomenon and the YouTubers phenomenon, right? It seems like they're not bothering with this, right? Like they're making their own content and doing well with it. Or PewDiePie decides he's going to take take down his channel because he's not happy about something, uh, you know. Which was the biggest marketing thing he could have done i think most of us said he's not doing it you guys are all falling victim to this he is not yeah. taking it down yeah absolutely and then he took down like some random channel he had <laughs> so it's just not the I, main I think, channel I, right yeah i think it's what the what he ended up doing is he took off like some other personal channel that he had that's what he killed off mm-hmm. and he's like i'm never going to get rid of my 50 million subscribers why would i ever do that i make a million over a million dollars a year like it, it, yeah, and there was like some weird stuff about like he felt like he's been discriminated against because he's white or something on, well, on that YouTube. Was, that was part of the whole shtick. That was, was just part yeah. of his thing? It was all a big marketing thing. What the hell? And I, I'm watching it like there's no way. He, you fools are going to get him up to 50 million subscribers. You know what? Good for him. The fact that he could pull that off, absolutely. I, I would do the same. If I could, I'd be happy with you know, mm-hmm. like a few thousand. Um, that'd be great. Yeah, uh, Juggalo John saying in the chat, like, yeah, it's uh, Grace, uh, Grace, Hannah, and Mamrie. 
all mm-hmm. all do stuff together. So yeah, oh, okay. Like those, they, they all collaborate and they make bigger things. Like somebody showed me some site. One of my clients showed me a site yesterday called Go Ninety. And look at it. Oh, it's, yeah. it's just a giant content network. I've never heard of it. But again, it's totally. like, but they've got some kind of crazy backer or something, and they have somebody who probably had a few YouTube videos and 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 got, you go, know, Go fiber. Ninety is Verizon, I believe. Is it Verizon? I believe. Hold on. Oh well, there you phone? go. Oh, that's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah okay. Go Ninety is on my phone. It's, that makes sense. Okay, it's, it's either Verizon or it's something to do with oh. Samsung. It came pre-installed oh, okay. on my phone. So it's not. I, I I was under the impression like it was like a. Uh, the old Black 20 ah. or something, where it was like some kind of content or Funny or Die or something. Introducing Stream Pass only on Verizon with Go90. Yes. Oh. So they have some tie into this. Okay. See, deep down inside, all these big media companies are part of these, like, hey, great new startup network to get on. Oh, wait, it's actually owned by. Yeah, yeah. But if I get my stuff for free, I don't really care who owns it at this point. <laughs> I, I really don't. <laughs> it, it's like, you know, it's like big beer buying up you know, all these uh, craft breweries. Mm-hmm. I really don't care who makes it as long as it's good. And no and no one's losing a job. Fine, I don't care. Just give me what I like. <laughs> I don't care that Facebook is completely uh, cannibalizing I Snapchat really, as long I as really it don't. works. <laughs> I honestly don't. I, I am a, a Facebook whore, and I will say that because I am all into their their advertising platform. I think it's fantastic. It mm-hmm. has a lot of still needs some more work, but I I I don't have bad experiences on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Like it works for me. I a, yeah, I used to hate it. I got remind me to kick you in my uh, Facebook advertising idea after the show. Somewhere I'm, I'm I'm boiling some stuff here. I might I might have some ideas. Anyways, um, and Facebook has treated me well, so and, I can't Cynth- complain. <laughs> Cynthia Klosky, last year you said that Netflix like platforms will become the normal with streaming video. And I based that on my mom. Okay, how's your and mom? My mom- How's your mom? Watching that all the time. Okay. So, so prediction came true. Based on well, mom. as far as my mom goes, I don't know. How about your mom? Based on mom. <laughs> factor, my mom's watching it now. Your mom? Yeah. My mom got on Roku. I think more moms are. I think. I think. Uh, yeah. My. I think my mom's on it too. That Frankie and Gracie show. I think it was. Like, yeah. There, there's, yeah. You're saying there's programming with like the older generations actors and actresses that that are mm-hmm. pulling them into it and stuff that they wouldn't pick up on a cbs or something because they don't have that mass appeal you know right so or my mom's in bed early and would never watch that anyways <laughs> oh well, so i don't know that horace and pete speaking of a weird things that old people might like horace and pete um is that thing that louis ck did that he was selling directly on his website that was like it had um alan alda and uh, Steve Buscemi on it, and it was basically a live to tape play with like maybe two or three really? cameras that they just did real time and it was a one take thing. And uh, it was really interesting, but again, very like emotional play kind of atmosphere to it. I bought like the first like two or three episodes. Whole thing's on Netflix now. I recommend it just for something interesting, different. And and Louis C.K. he he funded it with his own money. You know, like he just said, I want to go do this thing. Oh, God's- he hates the establishment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but he also has some deals with Netflix and stuff. So, you know, so that, just want to throw that out there. Um, again, I apparently didn't make a prediction last year or anything of worth. But uh, so I guess I, I so I'll take credit. I'll take credit and blame for all the rest of these. Chilla says AI advancement for direct product interaction without an app. So I think he's talking about something like, uh, I don't know, Alexa kind of is Ooh. this right kind, yeah actually i think i think that, the echo is becoming that right sure um katie we'll uh, give it to him we'll give you we'll give you that one chilla gets you a, guys do you, you guys have an alexa like i find that i like talking to my alexa like conversationally and i wish she would talk back nice more nicely <laughs> like she's really not <laughs> chatty in the way that siri can yeah, be or yeah. snarky or anything like no, that. I, you know I, what I, I mean i want I like her, but she's like she. I, it's like a one-way friendship. I don't have one. I would be afraid to hear what my kids ask Alexa, <laughs> <laughs> and if it would hear me yelling at them for like, asking such I, questions. I feel like I want an online re- reality show with your kid. You no your kids. Like I, I just this seems yeah. like it'd be very entertaining. <laughs> I was telling Ginger earlier today what the conversations are like with my kids. No, that does not need. To, they do not need to be on the internet because. Some college recruiter someday will go back. Bad enough they're going to find my should I drink that archives mm-hmm. and realize who their daddy was. That is – wow, you're at that <laughs> point. I've, been, I've thought about that a little bit. Like, man, I mean, It's still like at least 10, on, 15 years. Your before. online history. Dad, you used to do what? 
<laughs> You're worried about employers. What about what your kids find? <laughs> Um, you can't go over to Teaspoon's house. Nope, nope, nope. Do you know nope, who his nope. daddy is? <laughs> I understand he used to be a priest. All right, Will Papa Lunchbox of the Mayhem Show says Apple will be innovators again with something new and interesting with the new iPhone Seven. Yes, no headphone mm-hmm. jack. <laughs> that that was bas- I mean, what well, the the tap button is not a button, mm-hmm. I guess. I can't say that iPhone 7 really stuck out there as like a have to get. I'm not. Whenever I see somebody with, oh, I got the iPhone 7, it was like, oh, like I almost feel bad. I'm sorry. You yeah. don't have a headphone jack. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, <laughs> somebody. What, um, are you guys hearing, what are you guys hearing about the new headphones, though? I mean, that literally just barely in anybody's hands, I guess, but. Um, people are not hating them and everybody's impressed by that. You know the I mean? people that are not hating it are the Apple fanboys that will never say anything bad about Apple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know one person that's had a, a friend of mine online. I had asked him and he said that he's having a heck of a time keeping them in his ears. Uh, Chilla, Chilla was talking about him last year or last month or last episode. <laughs> and uh, he actually has these, these form fit things to kind of plug, plug them into. So like stay in your ear a little better mm-hmm. and everything. So, or what, 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 what? No, I no. said Katie. Katie was Katie was the. Uh... Oh no, I did. I didn't. Did... Oh, I did skip over Katie. Thank you, um, thank you, <laughs> producer Missy. Uh, but that's why she. That's what she's here for. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, that's probably the closest thing to the innovation was, was that. But that's. Besides, uh, it's, I think everyone was very disappointed to find out that that was the. The, big thing. I mean, the, the I think I think their biggest innovation was not releasing a phone that explodes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, that's what saved them this year, right? It is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to say I'm not going to get a 7S next year. I probably am. But maybe I'll wait for an 8. I don't know. I, we'll see how I feel in a year. I think part or, of the big backlash against Apple, though, was their messaging. Yeah. Have courage. You know? That, the whole courage thing that really ticked off a lot yeah, of people. But that's all all the pundits and fanboys and stuff. You know, I I, I don't know if that's in mass really really sticking. Like with I heard that I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. That's the message you're going with with this thing. Mm. And, and I'm seeing that like as a, a marketing person going, really, you had a chance to like do something really cool with this, and that's mm-hmm. I, that, that's not a good choice. All <laughs> right, Katie, I was I was starting to get into uh, technology to communicate with pets. Do, do we see anything? I mean, there's that thing where you can um, laser your cat with uh, with your phone remotely. You can laser your Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've seen that? I didn't see the video. Oh, I've seen it at like CES the last two years, and I think it finally came out. So, no. Well, we rate dogs' Twitter account is really fun. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be fun. It would be great if there's like a dog collar or something. Like a wearables for pets. Can I? You mean you like know an what? up? Can I? Can I? This I would go for. It. This I would definitely be on top of. Hold on, okay. hold on. What's that? I would. I would be all over that. I would love to know what my cats are doing all day. I realize. Well, <laughs> I actually know what my cats are doing all day. They are sleeping. But I just want to know. <laughs> know. You know what I mean? I, uh, I I swung a webcam from the the Raspberry Pi security into the living room and never put it back out into the window. And now I just like watch my dog all day. <laughs> Like, oh, the dog's in the window barking at something. I should probably go check it out. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Is there, is there a collar or something? Catterbox. 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 What is this? Is that like Chatterbait? Cat what? Catterbox.com. Uh, uh, pretty much how you would think it's spelled? Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, no. Did we? Did we? I think we did. What is this? The Temptations Lab. Is this for real? Research dedicated to the future of fun times with your cat. And it's the world's first talking cat caller. No, um, I don't no. have audio in here. Please don't be real. Oh, no. This cannot be real. Please. Uh, about the I, this does not look familiar at all. Unless it was like a Kickstarter at the time. Maybe. The Verge is saying it can't possibly exist. <laughs> there you go. Um, Although it was written by a dog lover, so... <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what that's about. So Katie, Katie, Katie's prediction for 2016 kind of may be up in the air there, depending on the uh, realism of this this counter box. 
it's clearly a, a thing that needs to happen. It will happen someday. Whether it's this year or next year, it'll change our lives. Like I the, feel sure. Just like the dolphin and Sequest, right? Um, yep. All right. Predictions time. What do we have in store for us to look forward to in 2017, do you think? This catterbox is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. And I don't even have a cat. <laughs> Put one on my fish. You want to borrow mine? No. No? <laughs> No. 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 All right. My prediction. Your prediction. Google Plus will finally die. Oh. I feel like we've been predicting that for the last three years. But I have been like the lone holdout. Really? I, I think it's I think it's finally met its match that we've moved enough off of there that there is absolutely no reason for Google Plus to be around now. No, no, There's it's nothing it, left. It's user groups that you for, you've long forgot about. Yeah, I'm the admin of a few and I I haven't gotten a notification in a while. The profile, the new profiles they rolled out last year are terrible. Mm -hmm. The business profiles are terrible. They're clunky. They're just. It, I get that they want to have a profile of people, which is cool across all Googley owned networks they have, like YouTube and everything. So I do have my own personal profile, but they have failed miserably at a social network. It, it's terrible. It's so bad now. It, there's no point for it. Just kill it. Mm -hmm. Free up the resources and. You know, go make some more self-driving things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make, I, make some cheap drones. It, That'd it, be great. It's that thing where my authentication has expired and my WordPress the cross post to it, and I don't bother. You know, <laughs> just like, eh, all right, no, like who? It is big though in South America because one of the the projects I work on, we offer the option to log in using your Google Plus account. Yeah. And people down there do have Google well, Plus. Of accounts. course, Orcat's been in Brazil until like a year ago. Yeah. So, so, you know, which is like something else that they bought. And it's like. And they're all on Androids down there. Yeah. So it makes sense that, that yeah, this absolutely. is a thing. But besides authentication <laughs> into something, there is no use for, for Google Plus. No. Absolutely. I'd love to finally get this one right. I got to go. I got to go with Twitter. Uh, Twitter will not be an independent company by the end of 2017. Mm. And I hope, it, and I'm hoping it doesn't go away because I think Twitter is a great thing. Could. I don't think, well, yeah, it it could, but if Twitter uh. went away, it's weird because Twitter is prominent. It's something that a lot of people. There was somebody. We were at a thing the other night, and and I didn't think the person we were talking to, Missy, you were there for that. I didn't think she was much of a social, like she was more of a general social media person. I thought, and she was talking about how like Twitter is how she gets her news. Right. Like the feed and following certain things okay. like like it is a very deep source for that. And also like like Facebook is doing a lot of stuff. And, yeah, we're getting more instant with the with the live streaming and everything. But Twitter is still the thing. I tweet when I'm at an event. I tweet after the event for Facebook. Right. It, it, it's still that thing that happens now. Could you imagine how much less rage we would have in the world if Twitter wasn't around? I don't know. I, I mean, Twitter is my news source as well. It's my newspaper for sure, and I use it much more than I do Facebook. So I maybe the, it, what we're seeing is really just more of a dividing of society between channels. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I, I can see that. I can see that. I use my. I, I use it for news also. I have columns set up though, so I can follow certain people, right, and certain businesses, so I can see what's going on because it's in Facebook. There's I, I don't have that option with Facebook to set up multiple feeds to follow certain things that I'm interested in. If they if they do go away, they're going to get swallowed up by one of these big media companies that just want to blast out their own content. Rumor of Disney maybe buying can, them or something yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, see, I can see rumors, that. rumors, you know. But I, you know, somebody, something like that. Could you I, imagine a Disney filter on Twitter conversations? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. Man. That'd be a feature. That'd be a feature. You know, Twitter for kids. You know, oh. Disney Kids Twitter. You know, yeah, I mean, I, that, I think that'd be great. Oh. Um, I, I like. I, I feel like it's going to end up being Google, but I'm kind of worried what would happen to it. You yeah. <laughs> know, right? I mean, I, I'm more, especially since. Dang it, Stork! Now Google Plus is going to stay around because no, but, Twitter's going to get sucked well, into yeah, it. Yeah, get sucked in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then it becomes Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> can I All play those. the? Is that the one I can play the piano on? On Buzz? Was or are you thinking Wave? Wave. I'm thinking Wave. Oh, I wish Wave oh. like at least stuck around because it was interesting. But then again, a lot of Wave really is 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 kind of integrated in a lot of the other things like chat yeah. and everything where it's more real time. So we, we, we have that in other ways. 
Oh, well, you've got me thinking about Twitter now. That's a good one. I know. I know. Well, who could, who else would buy it? You want to get like like sub predictions of, of where it could go? Well, if the uh, the Verizon Yahoo deal folds, <laughs> whoops, security, <laughs> whoops. That's where I, hey. I'm, I'm thinking it could go that way. I'm thinking you know Verizon. Hey, Verizon. Verizon's making a serious play for for broadband and for owning all media. My, my tweets, my 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 tweets um, are, are are bandwidth free on uh, on Verizon, maybe. <laughs> No, but surprisingly, all the complaints you have about Verizon seem to go away. Hmm? All your tweets complaining about Verizon that no. will just <laughs> Oh, that's why <laughs> I haven't been able to fix my stuff here. Oh, boy. Um, Cynthia Klosky, I believe you still need to give a prediction for 2017. Yeah, I mean, like, it's really hard to make a prediction after a year like this has been. Like, who could have predicted... Any single day in this year. So, so I really am feeling uh, more than, despite my, you know, great success in predicting the whole, you know, uh, streaming television for grandmoms thing. <laughs> I, I think all that I can say for sure is that um, the virtual reality video will not be a thing next year. I mean, I'm saying mm. in the sense that, like, it's not going to, it's still going to be nowhere and we're all going to be wondering why. Like, are you talking it's about? It's just too hard. I think it's too hard to shoot. Do you know what I mean? Like the like okay. cardboard. It's not going to get past cardboard. You know. I don't know what you're talking about. This is awesome. I want one. <laughs> one of these guys. I need a piece of cardboard, and this is the one that the German sent me. I don't even know Splash is still around. <laughs> I need to check that. Uh, we gave him a little bit of press on here, but um, um, man, because I was really betting on that 360 video there. <laughs> I mean, there's so many great like ways that you want to use it, but uh, that people think they want to use it. But it's, I just feel like it is too, way too many technical steps to shoot, to edit, to figure out even how the storytelling works. It's just, it's going to be in the offing for, I say, a good maybe three more years. Okay, okay, but here. but still, like, there's room for early adopters to be playing in that field right now, right? I mean, we're seeing stuff mm-hmm. like like the Macy's Parade had some 360 video this year. Uh, the Star Wars stuff last year had some promotional videos. Although I noticed there wasn't anything this year for it that I'm aware of. Uh, the WWE started playing with it a little bit. So I I think you're right. Yeah, I, I think I agree it's going to be niche. I, I don't expect everybody to be jumping into it. But um, it's a nice it's a, it's a nice gimmick. I, I would call it a gimmick. I'll absolutely call it a gimmick, even for the things that we've used it for. But it's been an effective gimmick in the in, in the things that we've done. Um, last check, that Scarehouse video is I was going to say the Scarehouse one was pretty sweet. 140,000 like views by now. Well, it's probably even more by now. So, But, but strangely, didn't take off on Facebook. Really? And that's usually where I see it. So That's where I saw that. That's got to do that math. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, it's, I, I think this VR stuff is getting closer, but it's still going to take another year for it to be a couple of years for it to be prominent, right? PlayStation VR is a big step towards that. Until you're to- fully immersed into Total Recall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're working <laughs> on that. Definitely working on that. That's the world I want. All it's right. Totally world Hold on. We got we got a latecomer. He's in here for the next show. But Riz, Riz up, is Riz? here. Hi. Riz, uh, go go go, go go hang out. Hold, go hang out with Doug. Or uh, hold on a second. With that green mic, I can turn that green mic on. Turn that green mic towards you. I don't have a camera on you, but Riz is here in the studio. I think this happened last week. Did it? Did it happen? I don't have you on the list. I mean, we had a will here, but oh, that's the wrong one. Is this you? Talk to it. Talk to it. There you are. Hey, Riz. Hey. Riz, um, do you have a technology, internet, social media, media uh, prediction for 2017 that doesn't involve wrestling? Because that's for the other show. Yeah, that is, that's for the next show, Sorg. Um, I think the Switch will be will revolutionize what we know as gaming right now. The Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch will revolutionize, and it will outsell the Wii. The original Wii. The original. Wow. Wow. You think it's that game changing? Yes. Okay. It takes mobile and console games and combines them into one. Okay. If the price is right, it's going to do work. 
Okay. Well, it's probably already past GameCube, so I'm not even going to try to say that. But, <laughs> but yeah. All right. All right. All right, cool. Riz, uh, Riz plays games on the um, on the uh, uh, YouTube. Um, I don't know what what else, and also over on um, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for 2016. I don't like that prediction, Riz, maybe because now I have to go buy something else. Yeah, it's it's pretty much on the wish list for me. Now, so, yeah, I've got a Wii and a Wii U and it, uh, Riz, Wiz, 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 Wiz. Why you gotta do this to me? Why you gotta mess with the Wii? Doug Durda, where can people find you online? You can find me at Douglas Durda, at S I D T, and at Yin's Love B B Q <laughs> on the Twitters. <laughs> Cynthia Clausey just got attacked by a cat. And I do not have a, ta- a cat that will attack me. I just had cat butt in my shot. And I was like, what is happening? Uh, well, if you want to find out the latest and greatest on craft beer, should I drink that.com and the latest and greatest with local barbecue in the Pittsburgh area. We've got over 35 restaurants and I plan on going to all of them or most of them. Hopefully. We'll see in the next year or two. Yenslovebbq.com. There you go. Cindy, where can people find you? What can they find? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, uh, if you look on Twitter, Cynthia Klosky, you'll you will find me retweeting people that I think are funny and interesting and smart. And then if you want to see what kind of work I'm doing, I'm at shiftcollaborative.com. And we've got a like an office warming coming up in January. If you float on by our website, you can find out about that and come and say hi to us in person if you're in the area. All right, go check it out. And, of course, everything is at sorgatronmedia.com. A lot of the shows that we're working on here, whether it be for just internal, uh, our own kind of business, or uh, some shows that we're doing as part of Sidekick Media Services, please go check all of that out. Big thanks to our friends at Slice on Broadway for supporting us for another year in 2016. Go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. My prediction is there will be more pizza in 2017. <laughs> So thank you so much thank for that. Thank goodness. And also, please, uh, around the first of the year, keep an eye on, um, <laughs> sorry, messages from the people coming. You know, I so I, tapped, t- I typed Avenue uh, when I was typing my address, and it auto-completed Average on my iPad over here. So I have some very confused guests for the later show. But anyways, um, keep an eye on the Patreon. Some new uh, things coming up there. Some new levels. Some new ways to contribute to the show and uh, more more things that uh, you'll get for contributing from the show, hopefully. And uh, we're already lining up some interviews for the awesome chat. Go check out everything from the year that we talked to. A lot of great companies with Alpha Lab, uh, with all over Pittsburgh, startups. and blah, blah. We, we talked with Max Hope, one of the co-founders of Livestream.com earlier in the year. Great archive there over the last year and a half. Uh, so some great, great stuff. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our awesome chat room that's been supporting us week the week here. Juggalo John, Mike Rolls, Brandon, Wheels, and more. We'll see you guys next time. Have an awesome New Year. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.